Hi, welcome to week three in our Mark study. I am so grateful that you are here. Let's pray. Oh Lord, thank you for your word. Thank you for your presence through the power of your Holy Spirit. Use your word to search us and to know us and to see if there be any grievous way in us. Lead us in your way everlasting. Our hearts resonate with David's prayer, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, let's go ahead and read. We're day one, Mark chapter three, verse one. Again, he, Jesus, entered the synagogue and a man was there with a withered, withered hand and they watched Jesus to see whether he would heal him on the Sabbath so that they might accuse him. And he said to the man with the withered hand, come here. And he said to them, is it lawful on the Sabbath to do good or to do harm, to save life or to kill? But they were silent. And he looked around at them with anger, grieved at their hardness of heart and said to the man, stretch out your hand. He stretched it out and his hand was restored. <laughs> The Pharisees went out and immediately held counsel with the Herodians against him, how to destroy him. Okay, friends, well, asking those detective questions, who, what, where, when, how, why, uh, I began with the who. We have Jesus, where, he's in a synagogue again, when, it is the Sabbath. And, uh, you know, who else is with him? Well, in the synagogue, there's a man with a withered hand, withered to become dried up, completely free of liquid or moisture. I don't know what that means for a hand, but he has a useless hand, right? And this would affect his way of life, his living. So, uh, yeah, he's not having the use of a hand would be very, very difficult in this first century ancient Near East time period. So who else is present? We have the Pharisees and we talked about the Pharisees last week. This is that sect of Jewish uh, believers, leaders who they are devoted to to the law. They are sticklers for the rules. And I think that we see that come out here. So my next question is, what is going on? Well, we see that the Pharisees are watching Jesus and they, they're watching to see if, they, if, if Jesus is going to heal this man with the withered hand on the Sabbath. Why? Why are they watching him so intently? Is it so that they might rejoice and see, is this God? Are their, are, are their hearts open to God and to the miracles of God? Well, no, Mark tells us, unfortunately, the answer of why is so that they might accuse him. They might accuse him, meaning they might level a charge against him. And most likely this is in a legal sense and probably in a religious legal sense, right? So that, it, that's kind of the gist of it. What happens is that Jesus goes ahead and heals the man, right? The, my main point, I just said Jesus heals a man on the Sabbath before the Pharisees in the synagogue, their hearts are hard and they leave to plot and kill him. All right, to destroy him. That's that's the meaning of destroy. So pretty, pretty ugly, right? Pretty ugly. Um, I just, yeah, I, in fact, in my interpret column, I just wrote jeepers. This is conflict indeed. Last week, we wrapped up by talking about conflict. And uh, yeah, we, we did. So my question was, what do I learn about the Pharisees? So, 
you know, I, I think maybe before I answer that question or, or share how I answered that question, we should talk about who the Herodians are. The Herodians are a sect of Jewish people who um, they sympathized with the Romans, all right? They were Roman sympathizers. So they and the Pharisees, they've never agreed on anything. They look at the world from two different viewpoints. It's like two different political systems. And uh, here they are. They come together to plot against Jesus. So just wanted to point that out. But here was my question. What do I learn about the hearts of the Pharisees? They are hard of hearts. And what does Jesus mean by that hardness of heart? They are callous. They, they have a callousness on their heart. They are devoid of feeling and mental awareness. That's the meaning of hardness of heart. Uh, devoid of feeling and mental awareness. Like, they, you know, I want to know, why don't they rejoice? Jesus is giving this man new life, a new lease on life. He'll be able to use his hands to go and work and provide for himself and his family. Uh, yeah, and, and Jesus's question, is it lawful? He's looking right at them. Is it legal? Is it permissible to do good on the Sabbath? Or is it more legal to do harm? Is it good to choose life or is it good to choose death on the Sabbath? And what do they do? They remain silent. That just shows the hardness of their heart, the callousness. All right, so that's what we learn about the Pharisees. And boy, I just feel like as an application, there's a, there ought to be a heart check. There ought to be a heart check. Um, yeah, am I a Pharisee in any way? Like, I mean, I, I know most of you would say, no, Carmen, you're not a Pharisee, but Lord, no, search me and know me. Is there some crevice of my heart where I am hardened, where I am callous and I am like a Pharisee? I think that's a worthy application for today. Well, finally, let's just end up with, here's what I learned about Jesus. I asked that question. What do I learn about who Jesus is? Number one, he is Lord over the Sabbath and he gifted the Sabbath to us. That's where we ended up in Mark chapter two, right? Jesus saying that the son of man is Lord over the Sabbath. Number two, I see that Jesus cares. He cares for the needs of people. What I see with the Pharisees is that they care about the rules. Jesus is caring about people and he cares about the life of this man with a withered hand. Uh, third, I see that Jesus looks. He sees, like he's looking at the Pharisees. He sees them. He sees their hearts. And number four, he feels anger. He feels anger over wrongdoing. They just remain silent. And he is angry. And he grieves. He grieves. Why? Because of the hardness of hearts that he sees as he looks at them. And number six, Jesus heals. He restores. He brings something back to its original state, to its prior state. And we all ought to just say, hallelujah, we praise you, Jesus. And number seven, here's where I ended. Jesus faces conflict. I talked about that at the end of the week last week. He actually faces hatred. And I just, I felt like here, he faces a wall, right? He faces, boom, he has faced a wall of conflict with the Pharisees and the Herodians. And friends, I don't know about you, but that brings me comfort to know that my Savior, my King, knows what it is to face a wall of conflict, whether it's relationship, whether it's health, whether it's marriage, whether it's work, whether it's school, wherever the wall is, Jesus knows what it feels like. And I don't know, friends, today that just brings me great comfort and it leads me to worship him.